Welcome everyone to the presentation. So my name is Ronit Mandal and I'm a PhD candidate at UBC University of British Columbia, Canada. So I'm going to present some of the research that I've been doing and also other collaborative work with Pulse Light at UBC and also give some basic fundamentals of the process. So here are the contents of my presentation. Firstly, I will talk about the Pulse Light processing with the background information and also some of the challenges that are faced during the processing. Secondly, I'll talk about the researches that have been done at UBC regarding the pulse light and lastly, conclusion. So as Dr. Singh already mentioned about the thermal processing, I will not take much time here, but to just summarize that thermal processing has been used for preservation of food and it reduces or inactivate microorganisms. It minimizes enzyme activity. It may induce physiochemical changes, which could be good or bad for the product, but definitely it does some destruction of the heat sensitive nutrients and also uh, creates undesirable ch sensory changes. So what is the solution? So we look forward to non-thermal processing. As the name suggests, non-thermal, that means uh, the temperature of the product does not increase during the processing. Some of the processes are HPP or high pressure processing, pulse electric field, cold plasma, ultrasonication, and pulse UV light. There are many more, but these are the emerging ones nowadays. So for the focus of today, I'll talk about pulse UV light technology. So what is pulse light? Pulse UV light or PL. So it is the application of intense and short duration pulses of broad spectrum white light. Now, when I say white light, the wavelength range is from 200 nanometer, that is UV, to 1100 nanometer, that is infrared. During this time, uh, the microbial inactivation takes place, mainly owing to the um, UV region. As we see uh, in this diagram, the uh, we can see the uh, simple setup of a pulse UV system. So we have a lamp which discharges energy in a very short time. And the, the energy or the light energy is focused on the sample that is placed underneath the lamp. So this is the basic idea of pulse UV processing. Now the main focus of the pulse UV is for preservation, right? So preservation by microbial inactivation. The main um, Mechanisms of working of the PL are uh, mainly divided into three parts, but mostly uh, we discuss the photochemical effect or we uh, say that it is the prevalent mechanism of microbial inactivation. So what it does is mainly the UV region or specifically 253.7 nanometer wavelength light, it creates thymine dimers. Uh, the thymine dimerization leads to the uh, uh, stopping of the cellular replication and the bacterial cell dies. In some cases, the viral virus inactivation have also been observed. Some other methods like photothermal effect it, uh, by uh, heating of the cells or localized heating of the cells, the cellular contents ooze out of the cell and the cell dies. Also due to cellular stress development by photophysical method have been attributed to the microbial inactivation by pulse light. So before moving on, we need to be associated, um, be familiarized with some of the terms which are, fem, uh, which are uh, used every now and then with pulse light. Firstly, fluence or radiance exposure. As you can see in this diagram, uh, it shows the fluence. The fluence is the sum total of all the energy that passes through a point in space, and it is a very difficult to measure. Instead, we measure the radiant exposure, which is the amount of energy falling on a surface underneath the lamp. And we measure radiant exposure using a radiometer. There are other terms like irradiance and fluence rate. And these uh, first uh, four terms are usually used for calculation of UV dosage for any process. Some other terms like exposure time, pulse width, pulse frequency, energy per pulse are also important for any uh, pulse like processing. You can see that uh, the F denotes the fluence and it is, it is given as this uh, product of energy per pulse or E, pulse frequency and treatment time. If you see this diagram, 
It shows the comparison of a pulse light processing and a continuous UV processing. If we supply the same amount of energy to both the systems, but in case of pulse light, the energy is dissipated in a, for a very short time, within a few microseconds or up to some milliseconds. But in case of uh, continuous UV light, the energy is dissipated for a longer time. Due to this uh, contradiction or difference, the pulse light has higher peak power, which is uh, having more efficacy, which is suggested by the uh, results of the research. Now, the pulse light emerged uh, during the 90s, or uh, around three decades back, and the major player in the pulse light processing is Xenon Corporation. There have been emergence of companies like Clenaror in France, and also a major player in Canada, especially their expertise in uh, hospital disinfection or uh, transit uh, disinfection is Solaris. So they have they are an emerging player in this direction, and we are fortunate to be working with them. So now there are some challenges with pulse light treatment. Uh, since uh, the light is mostly restricted to the surface of any product, solids are uh, better treated, or they are uh, excellent um, due to its excellent superficial treatment. Solid foods are uh, effectively treated. So some of the small fruits like berries are um, they are um, they can be treated better with the pulse light. Now the challenge comes when we treat the liquid foods because of the limited penetration. So factors like clarity, turbidity, color, absorption coefficient play a major role in the process efficacy. As a matter of fact, light energy interacts with the matter and it decays uh, when it passes through the sample. So when we pass a, uh, when we shine light on a liquid surface, it, it, uh, it decreases exponentially when it passes through the inner layers of the sample and it is effective only up to few mm. You can see the light penetration is very low and it depends on the type of sample we are treating. So this is a major challenge for pulse light processing. And this, uh, uh, so we want a thin profile treatment so that the process is uniform. Now for solid food decont de decontamination, the challenges are shadowing effect on microorganisms, also surface roughness. Solid foods are treated in batch system and it is suitable for small fruits, cut fruits, and vegetable decontamination. For liquid foods, the process uniformity governs the uh, treatment. The transparency and the flow properties of the sample are important. For liquid foods, the uh, product is uh, passed through the inlet and collected from the outlet, and the lamp is placed uh, maybe within the chamber or near the chamber. So liquid foods are treated in a continuous flow system to, to be economically viable. Also, it is suitable only for pumpable liquid foods like juices and milk, which should, which should be uh, passed in a thin film. You can know more about the uh, technology by reading this paper. We uh, published this last year. And for easy access, you can just scan this QR code if you're interested in reading about the technology further. Now I will talk about some of the researches that have been carried out uh, by me or, or collaborations uh, with different researchers at our lab. So um, this is the system that we have. We are fortunate to get this uh, and we are uh, having the collaboration with Solaris Disinfection. So basically they have supplied us with a lamp which emits 30 joules per pulse at 2 kV. The wavelength ranges from 200 to 1100 nanometer uh, the lamp is 62 centimeter in length and its diameter is 0.9 centimeter. So we can play with the frequency and the treatment time uh, during the processing. And the products that we have uh, worked with are white grapes, red grapes, blueberries, and the liquid products like gallic acid solution, um, black tea infusions, milk, grape juice, watermelon juice, and red wine. So I will now move on, some, move on to some of the results that we have obtained yet now. Firstly, I talk about the white grapes. Now this was, uh, we, we did this research uh, to mainly see the effect on the um, quality changes in grapes after pulse light processing. So we played with the uh, time, treatment time and frequency and 
we got the influence from 0.4 to 36.7 joules per centimeter square. And then we stored the product for 20, uh, for product at 23 degrees Celsius for 17 days. So this was the schematic of the process. We placed the grapes under the lamp. And as you can see, uh, for the mass loss or the weight loss of the samples or the grapes, we observed that the weight loss was uh, increasing with the um, storage uh, storage time, which is uh, evident for all the samples. But mostly at higher fluences, the weight loss, especially at week uh, two after two weeks, was higher than any other. And so, in case of color change, we also see that the color change at the end of uh, week two or after day seventeen was higher mostly for the uh, highest uh, fluence uh, applications. In this picture, you can see that uh, at day zero, this is the how, how the grapes look like. And after day 17, you can see the color changes mostly for the uh, uh, highest fluence treated uh, grape samples. So we, we uh, came up with an idea that uh, maybe pulse light could enhance the drying or maybe help in uh, supplementing uh, drying processes. So we need to explore this further. Next, we also treated red grapes. And the main, the main aim was to inactivate E. coli on grapes. So these uh, type of grapes are used in wine production. So we want to decontaminate those grapes. The parameters we played with are the treatment times from 1 to 150 seconds. Uh, different uh, distances, 5, 8, and 10 centimeter, and pulse frequency of uh, 3 hertz. What we observed that the distance was uh, a major factor in determining the process um, uh, or microbial inactivation. For less distance, 5 centimeter distance, the D value or the time required to kill one log of E. coli was 21 seconds, and it increased as the distance increased. So we did some um, uh, kinetic relationships and we uh, came up with uh, some of the kinetic parameters of the process. And we also observed a three log reduction when we, um, when we treated the grapes up to 12 joules per centimeter square. We also did the storage study and the with storage time, the population of E. coli was increasing in the grapes. But it was even after maximum um, Oh, even after the uh, fluence application of 12 joules per centimeter square, the maximum um, logs CFU was even less than the what was after control. Moving on to the liquid foods treatment. Firstly, uh, I'll talk about the kalic acid uh, treatment. So kalic acid is a, a model phenol solution uh, which represents the uh, which, which represents any phenolic compounds in the simplest form. So for this, we took gallic acid solution and played with the parameters like treatment time and frequency. So we got fluence from 1.07 to 17.2 joules per centimeter squared. We observed the changes in uh, temperature for the treatment. And as we can see, the temperature change was only 70% of the initial. So the temperature change was not uh, much, but what we observed was the photo oxidation of gallic acid which was evident by the change in color at the highest fluence, which means that the uh, gallic acid um, undergoes some photooxidation and changes into coloring pigments. So delta E represents the total color change in the system. And since the color change was very high, and we observed that the highest uh, fluence application led to the uh, browning of the gallic acid solution, which means the gallic acid decomposed. We also did some response surfaces, and after some statistical analysis, we found that to minimize browning of gallic acid solution, we can apply dosage as low as 3.82 joules per centimeter square. You can read more about the paper in this published, um, published paper. Secondly, I'll talk about the black tea infusion uh, treatment. So black tea, we all uh, we all drink tea or coffee, but uh, we all know that black tea it has some health benefits. Like uh, it has uh, anti-cancerous effect. It can be 
um, it is good for the heart. Also, it is uh, it has anti-aging activity. So we took um, black tea infusions at two different concentrations. One is 200 and one is 250, and treated with pulse light from fluence of 1.07 to 17.2 joules per centimeter square. So the aim was to see the how the effect of uh, pulse light on the quality um, quality of tea takes place. So we observed the changes in color, and the color was uh, changing uh, mostly for the concentrated solution or 1 is to 50 solution. We did not observe much uh, variations in the total phenolics and DPPH of the tea uh, uh, samples. We did some response surfaces to optimize the process based on total color change, total phenolic concentration, and DPPH antioxidant activity. And we observed that for a frequency of 2 hertz and time of 43 seconds, um, the treatment gave us the uh, maximum retention of deep, uh, antioxidant activity and uh, deep, uh, also total phenolics and minimum color change. So you can read more about the research in our upcoming paper on the um, black tea infusion processing. Now this is this forms the main part of my PhD research where I am designing a continuous liquid food processing system with a flow rate of 15 to 75 liters per hour. So in our lab, we have designed two different systems for liquid food processing. Firstly, the AT reactor or annular reactor, whereby the lamp is placed in, in the axis of the cylinder cylindrical chamber and the liquid food is passed in an annulus form. Secondly, we have the CT reactor or coiled reactor in which the liquid is passed in a spiral form around the lamp. These are the different um, dimensions or the uh, specifications of the system, but mostly uh, what we did was we played with the parameters like pulse frequency, 1, 3, and 5 hertz. Uh, we changed flow, uh, flow rate from 15 to 75 liters per hour, and also we played with the um, product parameters like color and turbidity. So we modeled the process using hydrodynamic modeling. We took, uh, we did the resistance time distribution studies and observed that um, the CT reactor or coil tube reactor was inducing more turbulence and hence it was more, uh, it was better in terms of its hydrodynamic capability or UV dose distribution. We also, um, we also found out the UV dosage uh, for, the, uh, for the different uh, processes, processing parameters and observed that the CT reactor was in fact able to deliver higher UV fluence um, or UV dosage, um, as you can see in the, uh, in the in the slide here. So AT reactor uh, delivered 22 to 322 joules per liter. CT reactor delivered 36 to 1148.6 joules per liter. Next, uh, I uh, what I did was I tried to model the light energy distribution in in model liquids. For model liquids, to simulate real liquid foods. And with different properties or different optical properties, I took water, I took water with um, red dye, water with green dye, and milk, and I passed, uh, I kept them and measured the energy uh, that is obtained by each liquid using a radiometer and modeled the light energy distribution in space in those liquids. So this I uh, I modeled the energy distribution in those liquids using this equation for different uh, liquids. And also I tried to simulate the product, uh, so simulate the process. What we did, observe, we, we observed the process uh, uniformity and how ef uh, efficient the process was. We also visualized the flow velocity profiles and light energy distribution for both type of reactors and all the processing parameters. What we observed was the water was mostly able to get highest UV dosage and milk was minimum because milk has the property to absorb UV light. So it has less, it has, uh, if we treat milk, it, it, it is uh, delivered with less UV and water was delivered with highest UV, which was also uh, for, observed in our light energy distribution experiment. So we need to, um, we did some uh, microbial validation with different uh, these liquids and we saw the same results. In fact, the 
water was having the maximum inactivation of microbes and milk the minimum. So you can read more about the characterization or the modeling part of this research in, in this paper. Lastly, I'll talk about some of the continuation work that is going on. So I'm treating fruit juices and milk, bovine milk, because there are so many types of milk today. So milk and bovine, uh, sorry, fruit juice are treated uh, using pulse light with the same processing parameters as before. And we analyze microbial inactivation and quality and nutritional changes. This table summarizes some of the thermophysical properties of the liquid foods that I worked with. So to summarize for bovine milk, I inoculated milk of different fat percentage as mentioned in the previous, the previous slide and passed it through the system for different reactors. I did the microbial enumeration and also did the stored them at four degrees Celsius to do the uh, quality study or nutritional changes study. In this, in this graph or in this histogram, you can see the uh, log reduction of microbes as you can see for uh, this represents E. coli, the first one and the second one represents listeria. As you can see, as we apply UV dosage and as, as the UV dosage increase, the log reductions also increase. And the maximum log reduction of two logs was observed in case of AT reactor. I did not, in, I don't, I did not include the other results because of a constraint of space, but mostly the CT reactor was able to deliver higher uh, inactivation than AT reactor. But in AT reactor, less than two logs was observed. In terms of quality, the color change was observed. The B star value, which represents the milk blueness, it decreased. Uh, there's a typo here, it should be saying decreased. So the blueness decreased. Uh, so we hypothesized that um, the blueness was observed because the vitamin B2, which shows uh, change, uh, which shows bluish or greenish shift to the color, was observed because of degradation of vitamin B2. So the vitamin B2 degradation was observed, in fact, when we did the analysis of the milk samples. Some other uh, other results included that vitamin C content decreased. Also, lipid and protein oxidation was observed. So we observed there are some quality changes in milk and also the inactivation of microorganisms was less. So what is the solution? Maybe we can go for some hurdle technology where we combine pulse light with thermal processing, mild thermal processing to get our results or maybe combine with some other uh, non-thermal processing. Now, in case of juice, we inoculated juice samples with the same microorganisms and did the microbial enumeration or the quality study. For microbial en enumeration study or microbial inactivation study, we saw that listeria was, uh, list listeria inactivation was less than E. coli, but mostly six log reduction was observed in case of uh, E. coli and listeria, more than six logs. And also, um, in this case also, CT reactor uh, showed us a higher inactivation. In terms of color uh, quality changes, the A star, which represents the decrease in the uh, redness, was observed. Since for the color change, we observed that as the residence time of the uh, as the residence time of the juice inside the reactor was increased, the A star decreased uh, significantly, and it was significantly less than the control, which is represented by this line, which means the juice redness decreased. And we we think that this is because of degradation of anthocyanins. So we did analyze the anthocyanin content in terms of total anthocyanin or specifically cyanidin 3 glycoside. We observed decrease in anthocyanin content as the residence time inside the reactor increased. Some other results include that the samples become darker after PLT treatment or maybe become brown, brownish. Also, the total phenolics and antioxidants decreased, but I did not uh, include this in this slide. So because of constraint of space. So with this, I come to the conclusion of my presentation. We talked about the pulse UV light treatment of foods, which is a non-thermal method for microbial de decontamination. Also, 
For solid foods, they require superficial treatment. For liquid foods, we want volumetric treatment. In terms of research done at UBC, we saw that white grapes treatment could be um, uh, used as a drying supplement. We observed three uh, log reduction in wine grapes, and we observed some optimization of the uh, protocols for uh, treating of poly polyphenol rich liquids like tea or milk. We observed two log reduction, but with decrease in um, quality characteristics, vitamin B2, vitamin C, protein, and lipid oxidation. For grape juice, we observed six log reduction, but there was decrease in redness, anthocyanin content, and total phenolics antioxidant act activity also decreased minimally. We are also exploring some other food products, but mostly the takeaway message is, uh, so we need to process, uh, optimize the PL protocols for coming up with a commercial application. With this, I acknowledge the support of my supervisor, Dr. Anubhav Pratap Singh, and also the support of my lab members. Lastly, I acknowledge the support of the funding agency, Solaris, the company we work with, also Faculty of Land and Food Systems, and NSERC. Thank you for listening. <laughs>